All right. It's another edition of the Edgington Post Show. I am Mark Edge coming to you for Free Talk Live. And today I have with me a friend of mine, Ben Powell. Are you there, hey, Ben? Mark. Hey, Good to be with you, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so now I have to give your pedigree, right? Um, you are a uh, professor at uh, Texas Tech University, and you direct the Free Market Institute. Sound right? That's right. It's yeah. great to be in West Texas doing that. In my opinion, one of the premier economists in the nation and world, and that's why people should listen to this particular conversation about national debt. But in order to cement this, you've been on television, radio many, many, many times with uh, all kinds of different organizations having to do with your books. I believe the most recent one is an ode to alcoholism as you drink your way through the world and how that affects the economy. It was a hell of a project. It was uh, socialism sucks. Two economists drink their way through the unfree world. <laughs> kind of uh, Anthony Bourdain meets Milton Friedman style book. And it's glorious. I mean, just totally worth picking up over at Amazon. If you have not, if you haven't heard of this, take my recommendation. It is well worth the, uh, the time and energy. Can you rattle off some other books for me so that, because this is the one that sticks in my mind, but again, probably not your most academic work. Definitely not the most academic, but definitely the one where I combine my hobby and my economics the most. <laughs> uh, but Out of Poverty, Sweatshops in the Global Economy is out, and the new one that I just finished, it's not released yet, is called Wretched Refuge, the Political Economy of Immigration and Institutions. Will you have a mouthful. Socialism sucks rolls off the tongue way easier. <laughs> Will you please contact me regarding that new book when it's out so that we can do an interview regarding that too? Absolutely. First of the year. And I would like my copy signed to my friend, Mark Edge, Ben Powell. <laughs> I'm happy to kill its resale value for you. <laughs> Thank you. So... Uh, let's get into it. Uh, something that I have talked about on the air a great deal. This is it's a cudgel of dem demagoguery, and I do not mind using it. I have some questions, and I'd like to ask those questions of an economist and do it in a wide open forum so that people can know where I'm being a demagogue and where I'm actually talking about the truth. So when George Bush took office, the national debt was $5 trillion. When Obama took office eight years later, the national debt was $10 trillion. These are round numbers. Um, when Trump took office eight years later, the national debt was $20 trillion. And I have predicted that the national debt will be, I'm guessing, $40 trillion. I'm willing to say over $30 trillion at the end of eight years, presuming, um, you know, I don't know what, I don't know how things are going to go, whether Trump gets reelected or not. I, I wouldn't care to speculate. We are now at 26 trillion and climbing fast right now. The um, the debt went up greatly during this COVID thing, and uh, now people are talking about extra spending that's going to help people based on um, you know whatever their economic status is, whatever the situation is. Spending is sky high. Debt is going up. How important is this? I think it's hugely important, Mark, and uh, you'll be surprised and maybe not pleased to know that Mark Edge and the International Monetary Fund agree. <laughs> uh, the, the latest prediction I saw out of the IMF was uh, not by the end of eight years of, of Trump potentially, but by the end of this year, they're forecasting that the debt to GDP ratio in the United States will be 131%. Hmm. So 131% debt relative to the size of our economy. Uh, this is this is massive. I mean, just a year ago, 2019, it was it was still bad, but 109 uh, percent. Part of this, of course, is an economic con contraction, but a lot of it's this explosive spending that we're that we're seeing that really has little to do with the crisis. A whole bunch of it, and, and a lot of it's a bad idea anyway. But this is going to uh, be a drag on our economy for for years to come, if not a crisis. So. There, I mean, so it, so it is a big problem. Now, Milton Friedman said something to the effect that at least one quote I heard one time was basically like, debt schmet, you know, who cares? It's not that big of a deal. Can you tell me the context of that quote or if he's just wrong? Well, it depends what the level of the debt was and what your overall economy looks like. And of course, Milton Friedman hasn't been with us for more than a decade. And you just talked about how those numbers exploded since then. Uh, but you know, when you think about debt as a proportion of the economy, if the economy is growing strong, it's easier for the government to pay it back. Uh, when you're getting up to 131% of GDP, that's an awful lot to pay back and require an awful lot of growth. 
that while the economy was strong before this COVID crisis, um, I don't expect an immediate bounce back afterwards. I think it'd be really hard to grow at a rate that will trivialize this. Uh, instead, what I think is scary is how the government might deal with it. I mean, we're at looking at World War II levels of debt relative yeah. to the size of our economy. And at, after World War II, what we saw was levels of financial oppression in order to help manage the interest on it, where the Fed and the Treasury coordinate to soak up some of the government bonds, but also where they put regulations in uh, that basically encourage or force um, uh, private parties to own more government debt in order to help keep the interest rates down. And we could see them doing stuff like that. Uh, I don't think we'll see the type of inflation that would make it go away. Uh, I think to some extent, governments have learned a little bit of their lesson about inflation in the post-war years, uh, but also just the way modern debt is handled and so much is indexed to inflation. It makes it a lot harder to simply inflate it away uh, the way they did in the past. Right. I mean, in World War II, they told people to buy war bonds, and then that was a loan to the United States government. They don't do that anymore. I've never, I haven't seen an ad for uh, bonds in, in years and years and years, and it's because of the de decoupling of the dollar from gold and silver. They don't need us to get, lend them money, but it also changes the whole landscape, making this completely unprecedented. We've this, these are unprecedented le levels of debt in so much as the monetary system has changed dramatically since 1945. And we really can't say what this is going to do. It can't. But I, I got this. Here's my prediction. It ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there that it ain't good. I mean, the, the options, right, when, when debt gets big, like either they have to drastically cut spending drastically raise taxes, but honestly, you know, eventually you're squeezing a rock here trying to get blood out of it. Uh, because if you raise tax levels to, two, to even higher rates, they don't get as much revenue as economic activity contracts. Uh, so I don't think you're going to see them be able to pay this off with the tax increases. Uh, you know, you hope that you can put in good deregulatory policies, some of which the current administration was doing prior to this crisis, uh, that helps the economy grow faster, which grows your tax base and helps pay it off. But honestly, the political will from any party, either party, I don't think sees constraining spending as one of their goals. I if think the that this takes off a little bit. I think they'll just spend more money. This seems like a problem with human nature. So the Keynesian economic theory and R Richard Nixon is quoted, you know, back in 1970, 70 or something like that, as having said, uh, we're all Keynesians now, meaning I think that we're all Keynesians because the government is Keynesian now, um, and that's the economic policy they're following. However, they're not. Um, I mean, I don't want to, you know, uh, I don't want to besmirch old Maynard and his theory um, because, you know, the United States government isn't even following that. The theory is, is that in times of plenty, the government contracts its uh, spending and pulls back and pays debt and does all these things. In times of want, the government spends and spends and spends. Now, I can make all the argument in the world against the spending aspect of it, uh, but let's leave that on the table for a uh, second and just go for the, the contracting part. They don't do it. They don't see the economy as ever being good enough to pay their debts. They're always expecting... They think that the spending thing can always work and it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, prior to... Keynes, Keynes, so first of all, I'm not a Keynesian no. now. And I'm sure you're not either, Mark. But <laughs> taking on, on I'm a Paulian. <laughs> God, you're the one, huh? <laughs> Here uh, I am. <laughs> you know, what happened was the, what they call the old fiscal religion kind of, of a government balancing its budget over, uh, over time went away with Keynesian economics, but when the, the politicians who say that they want to implement Keynesianism, you're absolutely right. They don't lower spending when times are good. It's a bad way to manage your macro economy anyway, but be that as it may, the political incentives never align to do that. The political incentives tell those in office now to spend now because it's popular, kick the payments down the road as much as you can, because you know what? You're not going to be the one who suffers the cons later. Um, and that's the type of reckless behavior we see out of both parties. It doesn't matter. Big government Bush, big government Obama, big spender Trump. Uh, they're all, all guilty of this. It's a more a matter of which interest groups get the handouts rather than what the total spending is. Do you have a solution for us? I mean, I, you know, as, as outlandish as it um, seems that uh, the United States government is going to listen to you or I, get a solution? Well, in terms of the current situation, stop spending and trying to stimulate. You can't stimulate economy that you've ordered shut down 
Instead, take your jackboot off our throats and allow people to go about normal economic activity and open up things in this country. That'll get you on a path started forward. It doesn't solve the debt problem that's been done, uh, but it'll at least allow us to start recovering. Although COVID's still here and people are still going to have contracted economic activity, even without government rules. So it's not going to be a real fast bounce back. How can people find out more from you? Where do you put your blogs? All that good stuff. Uh, the Free Market Institute at Texas Tech is fmi.ttu.edu. Or you can Google Socialism Sucks and find it on Amazon. And that's a better way to hang out with me for a couple of beers.